is fuel for your body, your mind, and definitely your sport. But let's face it, nutrition is confusing and the expectations on girls and women to be thin and have a six pack are exhausting. If you've ever been frustrated with your body, confused about nutrition, obsessed with eating healthy or guilty when you don't, under ate, over ate, or overtrained, and overwhelmed with all the pressure, then this podcast is for you. Nutrition can be easy, you can take control of it, but it might start with letting go of control by asking for help and making a change. I'm Lindsay Elizabeth Cortez, sports dietitian and owner of Rise Up Nutrition, where I empower female athletes to overcome nutrition concerns and perform at their highest level, to stop being confused by all the mixed or harmful messages, and finally have confidence in your body as a fierce, fit, and fueled female athlete. All right. I have a, another amazing guest. They're always amazing guests. I'm here with Anna Rohr. She is a runner and she grew up in Indiana, started running as early as seventh grade. She was a five-time national champion in high school, eight-time All-American for the University of Notre Dame, where she studied neuroscience and earned her master's in business management. After graduating, she ran professionally for the Boston Athletic Association, and she started her own coaching and mentoring business for athletes. Currently, Anna is still coaching athletes and has a full-time job with Dream Fuel as a mindset and performance coach for high-growth companies. Anna, we're so excited to talk to you today. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, this will this will be awesome. And I, I was thinking about kind of where I want this conversation to go. There's so, you know, we can talk about running nutrition mindset, all of it. And I think just to kind of kick us off, maybe we can just start focusing on a little bit of like your your running career and, you know, where it started all is taking you because I think when we tap into mindset, I mean, right? Like, why is that a passion of yours? Because of everything you've been through, you know? So absolutely. Yeah. You know, starting in high school, you were, you know, footlocker champion twice, Gatorade girls cross country runner of the year back in 2014, 2015. Can you share a little bit more about your high school career. I know it sounds fabulous, but I know where there there were some really hard moments in there too. So can you give our listeners just a little rundown of those those four years of running high school cross country and track and field? Yeah, yeah. My high school running story was full of the ultimate peaks and valleys, I would say. As a freshman, I started off strong. I was running in the low 19 minute range for the 5k and then got injured during cross country season about halfway through. So didn't, didn't get to run at state or anything. I came back and qualified for state in track that year. Um, but was very much middle. I think I finished like exactly middle maybe of, um, the state championship for track that year. Um, and then over that summer going into my sophomore year, there were a lot of, little changes that amounted to an incredible breakthrough. So I, like I said, I was running in the low 19 minute range as a freshman. And then by the end of my sophomore year, I was running in the 1650s for the 5k. That's a huge jump. Huge, huge jump. Um, Very much unexpected, I would say. I mean, we expected some improvement, but by no means going from barely qualified, like not even qualifying for state the year before to winning state and winning Foot Locker National Championship. So it was, it was a huge jump, but it was, that was a big foundational year for my interest in mindset as well. And I can get into that a little bit, a little bit more later, but from, from my sophomore to junior year, I again, started off really strong for cross country season. I got to go to the Nike elite camp in Oregon that summer and just met the other top runners in the nation. We were all training together, super excited for the season. Um, I set a PR the first meet and then a couple weeks later was in a wheelchair. I had double stress fractures in both navicular bones in my feet, which is the bone like right above your arch, very slow healing. and. Yeah, so I entered the season expecting to try to defend my national championship and just a few weeks in was very heartbroken. 
And it, it just, uh, it wasn't just a disappointment for me. I felt like I was disappointing my team, my school, my city, my state, um, all these, all these people that I knew were rooting for me. It was tough because I felt like that was the time I let them down, but it ended up being a really great period of growth and something I am incredibly grateful for now. But at the time, very difficult, but it was a great opportunity to get to spend time doing things outside of running. So I was really involved. I wrote for the school paper. I was involved in band. I got to spend... I was a member of a youth group. So I got to spend a lot of time there as well and grow in faith um, and just like learn how to be a cheerleader. And not not that I wasn't cheering on my team, of course, but it's uh, just learning to be okay with that. It's a different perspective. Very different. Yes. So uh was able to come back and run track season and defended my state title in track that year and then won the New Balance Outdoor 5K that summer. But right after that race, I noticed some more foot pain and my that there was just some regression it showed in the healing of my navicular bones. So I ended up taking off that entire summer from running going into my senior year of high school. So that was uh, another big setback, but I knew it wasn't quite as bad. We caught it earlier than the prior year when I was in a wheelchair, but nonetheless, uh, like had to take off the entire summer. And my first race back was our conference meet, like the beginning of October and was able to come back and win state. I think I was only running around 25 miles at that time because just coming back from injury and trained through and got to defend my Foot Locker National Championship. And that one was was, uh, very, it's hard even to describe the words for it. It was, it was gratifying, but it was like, you know what, this is just recognizing that it was such a great comeback story. And so many people were able to reach out to me from that who were suffering from really big injuries and ask me like, how did you do this? How did you come back? So it was great to be able to share my journey with them um, and like give a lot of people hope for being able to come back from these, these big difficulties. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you come back from that? <laughs> like, um, well, I, I'm sure it's not an easy answer, but like, especially mentally, like going into your senior year, having feeling like there's so much pressure, maybe not knowing if you're at your best, can you really race and compete after everything you've been through, you know, what were some of the mental tactics? If you can remember back, I like, it's funny too, because when I think back to high school, you know, my personal experiences though were totally different than yours, but it's just like, also like, you're just a kid. Yeah. You know? So like, this is like a lot of pressure and expectation. And like, I think it's, it's almost different to like outsider, like, parents and adults being like, wow, that's, but like, you're just a kid. Like sometimes you're just out there having fun, but like, is there, you know, what was that like for you from a mental standpoint to go into your senior year? And did you have any at that time, like what was going on in your head to be able to, to make that big comeback? Yeah. Yeah. I think to answer that, I need to give a little bit more background on the time I was in a wheelchair because it was a huge growth point for me. So like day one of going into school in a wheelchair and given people weren't expecting it, people didn't know I was injured. And then it was like that Friday, found everything out, had to get a wheelchair. My mom was a special needs teacher at our high school. And so I was like throwing a pity party for myself, which understandably it was, it was a, it was a difficult time. I was very quickly brought to the reality of the situation because I was being like wheeled in my mom was like bringing me into school and she had three students that were in wheelchairs that were coming off of the school bus at the same time. And I was just mortified because I was like, I don't want to feel like I'm, I'm being compared to this. And then I just so much guilt. Um, was like, how, how can I think that, you know, these, these kids have no, no option. This is their life. And, and they're still like joyful. They still, they still have joy. And given like, they don't, they don't know what life is like for us either. But I was like, you know what, this is, this is, 
such a short period of my life. I can't, I can't sit here and dwell on it when I am so blessed to have all that I do. So it was a very quick wake up call that helped me realize like, all right, this is temporary. I'm going to figure out the reason behind this. I'm going to grow in other areas. I'm going to keep training as hard as I can in other ways, but I'm just going to have faith and like trust that this is going to work itself out. So fast forwarding to senior year, going into that, that last season. Um, and like, that's when I was doing college recruiting and stuff and it was stressful to talk to coaches and they didn't know why I wasn't running. So not that I, I didn't hide anything, but it was just, it, it made me nervous that they would be nervous, but I just really, I, uh, had a lot of great doctors that worked with me, like the surgeon that did my foot surgery works for the, he's like the main surgeon for the Colts. So the, the doctors that I work with in Indianapolis, like work for USA track and field. So all of them were telling me, we really think this is going to heal. We really think these, these techniques we're teaching you, these exercises to change your form are going to work. And having all those people believe in me is what made me really think, yeah, this, this is going to come together. So I was like, I just need to trust the process. It's going to work. I have to be patient. And that, that patience was, was really what carried me, carried me through the, the like uncertainty. Yeah. So the patience and the, the belief coming from others is what helped me believe it was going to come together. Yeah. What, what a great story and a good reminder. And it's interesting how in some of our like lowest moments, whether that be injury or, you know, otherwise just in life in our lowest moments can be such a, an opportunity for growth in other areas. Like you were saying, it seems like this was really a time for you that you made a lot of like, not that I knew you at the time, but like just grew, like matured, you know, of like, you know, not throwing that pity party, like you were saying, and just like growth and maturity, growth and in, in trust and in faith in other people around you, recognizing all that you had and like the support system. And then, like you said, too, like just exploring other things, like being in band, like you were saying and stuff like, uh, and I think that's super important, especially for high school. I, well, for all of us, whatever level athlete you are, but like in high school, it's like, there's other things, even if you're a runner, there's other things that you can do no matter even if you know, you were a, a star in high school, but there were other things that you were, you weren't just a runner, you know, you did band and you were involved in your youth group. And those are things that when running's taken away from you for injury or for any other reason, like there's other things and you can yes. explore those and find growth in that. So it seems like that was a really great time for you and all kind of helped you lead to that senior year where it just all came in. You really started trusting the process and and keeping that positive attitude and that accumulated to finding a lot more success again senior year once you were in a healthier place. Yes, yes, absolutely. And then and track season went went so well that year as well. Um and it was it was awesome to see to improve, prove like yes, I can stay healthy for an extended period of time. We just had to figure out the root cause of this injury and the doctors and trainers, everyone I worked with just really, really helped me have hope during that time. Yeah, totally. And I want to go back to, you mentioned like the big jump between freshman and sophomore year too. And I, I think I, I might know one reason, maybe there's lots of reasons, but I think I, whether I read it somewhere or heard you talk about it somewhere, it, does it have anything to do with your nutrition status? Yes. Yes. I thought so. <laughs> Iron deficiency was a a big issue, but the thing was, I, I so I got my ferritin checked very quickly after track season my freshman year, not feeling any fatigue or anything. I just a doctor I worked with just said, "Hey, a lot of female runners have low iron. You should just get your levels checked." And I think I was at a four, super low. My yeah, yeah, my normal range now is like around (laughs) fifty. Um, that's where I feel good and normal. But so I, I was iron deficient and feeling low energy chronically. So I had no idea what it felt like to feel good. So I started taking iron. I think that was a huge, a huge contributor to it. And then also added in, added in some cross training a couple of days, probably four, four days a week, nothing major, like a half hour, but it adds up and 
just started running with the boys and that adds up. So yeah, lots of little changes that really added up. But I think the low iron from my experience with other teammates and people I've coached that have had low iron and then come back night and day. It's a drastic jump. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is drastic. I was just speaking to, to somebody the other day who is, is a, a high school runner too. And like their coach is just, just has all their athletes take iron, but I want to actually take a moment to, to pause and, and say, no, let's just make it a habit to get your iron checked regularly. I think it's good for all people to get some blood work done probably once a year or so. And iron should be included in that. Um, then definitely if you are a female athlete or runner, you know, get your iron checked. And sometimes you do have to ask your doctor, a normal blood panel might check your hemoglobin and hematocrit. And if you are anemic, there's most likely your hemoglobin and hematocrit has been affected, but you can also have low iron and normal hemoglobin hematocrit. And you want to catch it before you get to a point where Anna found herself (laughs) of a ferritin of four, which is really, really low. And like you said, it just, I believe in whole foods and there's nutrition changes to make, but when you have an iron status that low, it's like, you got to get on supplements. You've got to fix this because you're, you don't even know how good you could feel if you had normal levels. So yeah, I think it's a uh, really important for everybody to just, you know, get have a routine doctor's appointment, routine blood work once a year or so, just keep up with that iron so that it doesn't suddenly drop to such a a low place. Yeah. But you were young at that time, you know, just picked up running and like, you know, and, and yeah, your- I, I was very oblivious to, <laughs> to a lot of things, even like heading in. I don't even know if I knew about a national that there was a national meet my sophomore year until, <laughs> until, until like, you were running it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. So, so iron was an important thing doing cross training and trusting the process, the people around you, making some big mindset shifts, keeping faith. And then, you know, you went on to to continue with an amazing career at Notre Dame as well, eight-time All-American. But I know similarly there, you had ups and downs with injuries. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. The main injury I had in college was my sophomore year. Um, it was like early spring. So during, during track season, I had a ran an awesome debut 10 K at Stanford. And then a couple weeks later had back spasms and shooting pain down my legs. So got an MRI, found a bulging disc in my low back. And that was uh, very, very interesting to have a bulging disc and have neurological pain while studying neuroscience at um, in school. So I, I knew exactly what was going on, which was sometimes good, sometimes bad. But that's, that's been an issue that I then dealt with the, the flare ups and then healing multiple times throughout the next. Uh, so that was about four years ago, so throughout the past four years. And really worked with those same those same doctors and trainers that I worked with in high school. They're at uh, they were at St. Vincent Sports Performance in Indianapolis. And they again like helped me help me so much. Um really thought we got to the bottom of it and then it was like something little would like like a, a fall in cross country or something or different like just like we found little things that would flare it up and would avoid those. So I had a lot of reason to believe Oh, it's it's not going to come back. We're doing everything we're supposed to do. It's going to be okay. So, unfortunately, like I would keep having having some ups and downs. But it's cool to be able to look back and see, like if I chart out my training and the times, like the months I wasn't running or was barely running, um, and then like seeing, all right, look, I got six at NCAA's to other people who like have seen me the year before and were expecting like a better performance. When I sit down with my coach and my family and team, like look at, all right, how much did I train to do that? Um, it's like, it's still, even though I didn't accomplish quite what I was hoping to, um, it's still neat to know like, yeah, look what I'll, look what I was still able to do given some of the issues I was having. 
Seriously. And and I was even gonna gonna interrupt us and be like, you know, we're kind of focusing on your injuries, but you've had just a, a amazing, spectacular career, you know. Like I think that every athlete has injuries, but I think that's just a unique, you know, part to your story that I think has really shaped like who you are. But it is like you've had an outstanding career and just like you said too, like an outstanding con- career considering all of that, you know, it's it's pretty yeah, when you think about how many days you had to take off and how many training days you missed, how many miles missed, and you were still able to accomplish that, that's even more like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. It, uh, yeah, definitely, again, just like high school, a lot of, a lot of peaks and valleys. Hey, fans, I hope you are enjoying this conversation so far, and we'll be back to it in just a moment. But first, I want to pause and let you know that this episode is brought to you by the Female Athlete System of Transformation, aka the fast track to overcome disordered eating and use food as fuel to perform at your highest level. The Female Athlete System of Transformation is my unique program and proven systems to guide female athletes to understanding and implementing the proper nutrition for their sport, life, and health. Myself and my team of registered sports dietitians work one-on-one with clients to address their unique needs and counsel them through the nutritional and behavioral changes needed. Many female athletes who resonate with disordered eating, mental guilt around food and body, relative energy deficiency in sport or female athlete triad, amenorrhea, repeat injuries due to negligent nutrition, or frankly, just a lack of knowledge and understanding on their fueling needs have seen incredible success in the fast track. After years of working as a sports RD, I've compiled the most effective ways for female athletes to learn nutrition, be supported, be challenged, and ultimately find their success with fueling as fast as possible. So don't wait another day. Get to your goals faster by joining the Female Athlete System of Transformation. Look in the show notes or head to the website to book a free call and learn more. Okay, now let's get you back to the conversation. Enjoy. I know we haven't talked like about your nutrition philosophy or anything like that, but yeah. What was that like throughout high school, college and dealing with injuries? Like what were your experiences with nutrition or did you have any experiences with it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, fun fact. I did actually for a period of time want to be a sports dietitian. I did an internship with one and still love it. I just, I just realized I don't like, I like learning about it a lot more than I like, like having that as something I teach every day, but I, I'm like so fascinated in it. That's um, a common thing I hear all the, like everybody's fascinated with nutrition, but like to actually, you know, it's, it's, it's always different when you make an interest a job. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Always different. Very true. <laughs> well, cool. Yeah. Yeah. But in high school, I wish I knew, like, you know, always wish I knew then what I know now, because I definitely think like the foot injuries could have been were definitely nutrition late related, mostly like er- very, very early in my running career. I struggle with some of those things, but then got a great, got a good handle on like, all right, we need to like, let's fuel better. But even then it was still just not, not understood. That's what I would say. I didn't, I didn't really know much about sports nutrition. Um, I knew, you know, you need to eat to fuel and eat healthy foods and, avoid, you know, maybe don't eat like, don't eat cookies right before workout or like something like that, but didn't know much. So then going to to college, actually learned a lot from, from the sports dietitians we had at school, but which was Anna Turner. I still, I still work, still work with her. I know her as well. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. She's fantastic. That's who I did my internship with, but so learn a lot from her, but also just learn from being around other elite females. And there is such a common misconception around like the key is balance. <laughs> so the, the misconception is you have to completely cut out certain things. This was what I, I didn't know as, at a young age. We had some girls on my high school team that told us like, you shouldn't eat sweets during this entire month that we have big races. So as a the 14 year old, I equate that with, okay, eat sweets and you run slow. That's what they're telling me. But then being around like other elite females and seeing like, hold on, we can have this balance. This is totally okay. 
Um, and then understanding, like studying science, studying nutrition and realizing, all right, let's break it down to what are we putting in our body? Like, what is this being broken down into? Not just looking at like, I mean, just looking at different type of types of carbohydrates and how does your body use energy and the importance of having fat in your diet. And just so many things that I was doing in general, but not an awesome job. And I didn't understand why it was necessary. So it was really cool to to learn the science behind it. Um, I'm very, I'm definitely a science person. I love to have the evidence. <laughs> so it was it was really great to to learn why why balance is key. And it's it's not just important for like, you know, balance having eating mostly healthy and whole whole foods like, but then throwing in if you really, if you really want to have French fries one day, like it's okay to have that. Just don't, you know, don't have it as, as like a staple. Um, don't have it all the time. So I realized reckon like learning that was, um, really important and then seeing how, um, it also transfers to your overall view of food as this is fuel. This is something you get to do. You get to like enjoy with others. Um, not to say that was like, I didn't have a, an issue with that before, but just recognizing like, you know, when you cut out these things and you're really strict, it actually makes your running performance worse. Um, I felt that like, I felt I would run better when I didn't think about it as much because my habits were naturally healthy, but I would run better when I just used my intuition and said yes to the things I really wanted in moderation. So it, it was neat how it is like not just a physical component, but a psychological component too. Like it, uh, you know, certain foods like release dopamine, they make you happy. Um, yeah. And so, when you're happier, you run better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And you're not using the mental energy to focus on, on like every single thing you're eating. You're using your mental energy for school and for your workout. So yeah, I just loved getting to learn the science behind nutrition and sports nutrition specifically, and just like understanding how I can perform my best and fuel properly. And yeah, like it, it definitely helps help my running performance. And I love getting to teach other athletes about it now. Yeah. Yeah. I love everything you're saying, Anna. I think it's all amazing. And, and yeah, when we're in high school, we just, we don't know, you know, we don't learn nutrition in school. And then you're picking up things from God knows where social media friends. Yeah. You know, just terrible (laughs) nutrition things are said. And so we can get down the wrong path really easily. And so educating yourself is, is the first step, right? And it doesn't mean we all have to study nutrition in college or anything, but just educating yourself. And and the trouble with that is finding reliable sources to educate yourself with, you know, just why I even, I even think like, regardless of having a problem with quotes, air quotes around that, whatever, you know, that means to you, but regardless of having a problem, I think it can be so helpful for athletes to just meet with a sports dietitian to just learn something, you know, whether in high school and college, um, college athletes, if you've never met with a dietitian, you have one on campus, like go meet with them just to learn something get a few reliable sources because that education piece can be powerful and you can start to develop your own, you know, nutrition philosophy. That's not just based on the culture around us, which has such misleading information and conflicting information sometimes. So yeah, it sounds like that was really powerful for you. Just like just educating yourself on it. And that was the first step for you. Yeah. And, and so much of what, what I know, I saw um, like early high school um, or in high school, I was, I I find a lot of people fall into this trap is you, you believe everything you read and you, you formulate these, these stories in your head of what you think it should, like what you think you should do. And so much of what we see about nutrition is like healthy eating looks like having a salad or like following all these, these different diets and some certain things like, you know, they, they work for some people, but something I love talking to athletes about is healthy, healthy is different for each person, like having a salad, that's really healthy for certain people. But for an elite athlete in training, 
having just a salad is, is actually not healthy. Like have that, but also have like, you know, have a sandwich with it, have like, you need to have more. The concept, the concept of healthy is a little bit different than what it's always construed as. Well, it has to be individualized there. We can't just write a list of these are all the healthy foods. It, it totally has to be individualized and it to you as a person at this time in your life and for what goal you're trying to accomplish. You know, what's healthy for me right now might be slightly different than what's healthy for me in 10 years or what was 10 years ago. So, and I think that's the cool thing about nutrition too and why it is so important to learn it and educate yourself on it. Like educate yourself on the science of it. Like going back to what you were saying is when you understand food, then you can apply it to all these different situations. When you understand the difference between a lettuce leaf and a sweet potato, then you, then you, and how your body digests it, then you can figure out like, okay, well, what do I need as an elite level runner versus, you know, somebody who's now maybe, you know, not at that level versus somebody who's injured. Like you can figure it out once you know the fundamentals and the science of it, which kind of just not to go too off topic, but randomly, like what made you study neuroscience? That's, intense. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. (laughs) I wasn't totally sure what I wanted to do after college. I ideally wanted to run, uh, which luckily that happened for a bit. I got to do that, but wasn't sure. Like I didn't want to go to med school, but everyone said, just study something that you love. And my dad is a neuropsychologist. So he, he works with patients, a lot of patients with brain injuries um, or some different memory deficits and such. But I I always thought it was so cool when we would go uh, on like vacations when he would have a conference or something. And he'd, he'd go to the conference in the morning, we get to do family stuff in the afternoon, and he'd bring back like little pamphlets or like, I even remember one time having uh, like lollipops that were brains. And I just like, I thought it was so cool. And uh, (laughs) so just hearing some of the stories my dad would tell as a kid, I think is what what really got me interested in the human brain. So I I absolutely loved going the neuroscience route. It was certainly not easy, but no, but really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, the brain is fascinating. I, you know, I'm as a dietitian, I'm someone who's always saying, you know, nutrition science is always evolving, because it's actually it is a new science, like, you know, we only discovered vitamin C in like the early 1900s, you know, (laughs) like we knew what an atom was that you can't even see before we understood what a calories were, you know? So like nutrition is a new science. And then you think about the mind and the field of neuroscience and how much we just do not know about the brain yet and all of its potential. And it's just like, wow. And, and that, controls everything in your life. And yet we know, you know, we know a lot about it, but we, we still so know so little comparatively. But yeah, I can also just see how this like, okay, so growing up with your dad being a neuropsychologist, and then you kind of overcoming as an athlete, you know, making some huge mindset shifts, and then studying neuroscience. And, you know, that kind of all accumulates to kind of where you're where you are now. I know you're still running, you you did some professional running post college, you're you know, but you also are doing a lot of work in the mindset space and in the coaching space and being a mentor, a coach. Can you tell us a bit about that? And like, you know, how your mindset tactics for your clients? Yeah, so I got the foundation for understanding mindset through athletics. My high school coach, Coach Cove, Chris Kovleski, he was a fantastic high school coach. And he taught us, like he taught us visualization, which is an extremely powerful tool. If you're an athlete, if you're anybody really, like strongly recommend. But he taught us that at, so that was my freshman year of high school. I learned visualization. Um, And then, which if you don't know, visualization is um, essentially going through the scenario. So for me, uh, the race, going through that in your mind before it happens. And what this does is it primes your it primes your brain to go after those goals, your subconscious mind, meaning your mind that that, uh, does always monitoring everything around you, but you're not necessarily thinking of every single thing around you, like the temperature and, you know, how how you're breathing and everything your brain's monitoring it. 
So your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's imagined. And when you can incorporate enough emotion as you are imagining, um, again, for me, a race, going through that in your mind, your brain, your brain knows the outcome that it wants, and it's going to do everything it can to go after that. I loved it for the fact that it helped calm my nerves a lot. Because you can't control anything in a race, but you can control your head. And it made me feel like I was in control, like I was prepared. So that was, I first learned that as a freshman in high school, used it for every single race of my career and learned a lot just about myself, about self-talk and how I came across methods to overcome, overcome pain and reframe situations and deal with very high pressure situations because of the the huge national races I was in. So I learned those early in high school, then went to school, studied neuroscience and realized, all right, here's all these techniques I'm doing. Here's why they work. And with my degree, I had got to take quite a few psychology classes as well. So I got to understand the, the athlete psyche as well. So it was really neat that I already had these tools and I had been using them. And then I got to understand understand why it's working. Like I said, with, with Nutrition, I love knowing science. So it was great to, to learn why it works. And then uh, now with, with the coaching that I do, I, I coach athletes, um, but I also coach business professionals. So a lot, of, a lot of sales teams and a lot of executives are the top people we work with because they're typically in very um, high stakes scenarios nearly every day. Or yeah, yeah, truly. So we work with them on mindset, meaning how are you going to stay calm, perform your best, be an elite performer, and uh, like, not crack under pressure. So I get to use neuroscience and use a lot of examples from my running career to explain what's happening in the brain. Why are we doing this technique? How can I help you be your best in these situations? And then with young athletes, that's, it's again, teaching, teaching a lot of what I learned in high school, truly. Yeah. Getting those like skills in place and habits of visualization and like positive self-talk, like those are things you can easily teach, you know, somebody at a young age and just build those good habits. Yes, absolutely. So it's, it's very neat to have them parallel. Um, I, I'm essentially, I started my own coaching mentoring for young athletes, um, just over a year ago prior to knowing I would end up in a career coaching mindset. So I started that because I recognized I wish I was taught, I was taught these things not just the mindset, but so many other things as a young, younger athlete. So I wanted to be able to mentor. And then from from there, I, you know, ran professionally, but then found found this job that I'm at now. Um, And it's really neat to see how it's on nearly the same, um, except now I get to I get to tie in more science. And just honestly, when you have a good mindset, you you lead an an incredible life because your outlook on difficult situations is something that's it's a positive challenge. It's something you're going to get through. It's not something that's going to tear you down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm just like just smiling over here <laughs> listening to you talk because I, I love this stuff so much. You know, I'll share a little bit of just my journey of like from a young age. I I did start to tap into like mindfulness and meditation and saw some therapists throughout my life, which was all helpful in starting my own business, Rise Up Nutrition, and where this podcast is, you know, grew from, I actually invested in a mindset coach myself. So exactly what you do, you know, and so I have a mindset coach, and that changed the game for me. And it is interesting in like the professional setting, how important that is. But it's funny, because then as a dietitian, there were a lot of things I was already doing with my clients as far as, you know, just counseling. And when we talk about things like body image, like positive self-talk and things like that, but then all these 
things I was learning with my mindset coach to my business, I was like, wait a second, I can apply this to my clients who are going through really difficult times with their nutrition and their bodies and their training. And I mean, and you know, I'm going to brag for a moment here, but I think that's one thing that makes like my programming different than some other dietitians is it's, we focus on the food a lot, but it's not, it's not just about the food. It's about the mind and the mindset a lot. So we do visualization with our clients. We do a lot of reframing the mind, positive self-talk. I do not claim to be a therapist or a psychologist, but like just the simple, like you were saying, like, I'm not, I'm not doing therapy sessions, but those skills and like, you know, just things that you started in high school, lots of people are never taught this. Yeah. And it changes your life. Yes. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. When you learn how to, to not get, have your entire day thrown off by something or, or even if it's a, a, more difficult season of life, given I can't claim to by any means to be perfect and have, um, you know, be happy 100% of the time. But I, I've just seen so many benefits of all right, here's what I did when I was on the start line for a national championship. Here's me like getting ready for a job interview or a really big presentation. I'm going to use these same, these same techniques, apply it here and it just, just, uh, it's amazing what, what outcome you can have and how you can be more present, more focused, and just overall, like having a, a better, a better scope on the situation when you know these, these tools. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, you know, nobody's ever going to be happy a hundred percent of the time, but I don't think that's the goal. The goal is that even in those, even in the rough times that, you know, you can keep persevering. And I think that's, maybe, maybe a a good way to summarize this podcast for you is, you know, kind of like even in the rough times, you always persevered and it led to so much success in doing so. Yeah. Thank you. It is, it is truly, I mean, it's a journey. Um, It's all about, it's all about your perspective. How are you going to view these, these challenges, view the highs and view the lows and what are you going to learn from each of those settings? And your your perspective on that is, is what you will make your reality and how you're going to respond to the situations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I also want to backtrack for a moment when you said like your subconscious, what, well, what was the line you said? Something about your subconscious can't separate reality versus not reality. Yeah. What's imagined. Yeah. Um, I think actually this does play a huge role in nutrition as well. Um, you know, so many people like your subconscious might be having thoughts about food or body. You know, this is a big issue with body image is like, we're not seeing things in, in reality. Your subconscious mind might be holding on to a comment that a boy said to you when you were 13. And then, you know, here you are as a 25 or 40 year old. And like subconsciously, you still have this belief about yourself and your body and how you look based on that, you know, one comment, it's like, that's not reality anymore. Like we, I see that a lot with my clients and also just like how we think about food, our subconscious might have lots of thoughts and opinions about food being good or bad or hurtful to us. And sometimes we don't even know it because it's in that subconscious and it's like, we don't know what's, what's real or what's not. And so again, going back to like, learning science, figuring out what's real, uncovering those subconscious blocks, doing some of this deep mindset work will help you kind of unveil those things and figure out, I don't know where I'm going with this, but just figure out what is, what is real. (laughs) Yeah, very true. And, and this is, that's something that we work with, not necessarily the nutrition aspect, but that's something we work with a lot of, a lot of people on because you have, you have these, these neural networks, you have neurons in your brain that these are the the little things that fire off when you do anything. <laughs> and every single thing that you do, there are neurons firing in your brain, making that happen. Well, throughout your whole body, but making that happen. And so any past memories you have, there are, there are little connections for that. And when people have these past things, they, they don't always realize that they're still interfering. And there are ways to, to be able to kind of, it's called depotentiate, but 
get rid of those neural networks. Um, they're firing really hard and they're affecting you, but there's ways to be able to kind of calm them down. And, and part of that, I'm not going to go like super deep into it, but, uh, this is just a skill for, for a, a multiple things, but being able to be mindful, um, like taking time to be silent and acknowledge them and let your thoughts come in, not, not dwell on them, not like, not, uh, try not to judge them, but just like, what do I actually think about this? And like being quiet and being intentional. And that's a, that's a skill for past, past, uh, memories that aren't so great, but also just being mindful and taking time to be silent like that is, is a great mindset technique to be able to focus better. Yeah. I like that. It's awesome, Anna. Well, oh my gosh, thank you so much for coming on the show. We just really enjoy talking to you and talking about all this stuff. So I, I kind of do want to just recap to your, your coaching right now. Can you just tell us a bit about that, who you coach, who, who can reach out to you and things like that? Yeah. So two, two separate coaching entities currently, my, my personal business that I do just for athletes is it's called next level racing. You can find, I have a website also on Instagram. Um, Instagram is coach Anna Roar. And then my website is next dash level dash racing.com. We'll include it in the show notes. Yes, thank you. So that's that's where I, I work with athletes. I write training plans, but I also do one on one mentorship. It just depends what the individual needs. And then my full time job is with Dream Fuel, and that is that is where I work. I I coach mindset with uh I work with high growth companies essentially, but executives, sales teams individuals it's it's a broad range but that's the the main demographic that we coach yeah awesome thank you for sharing we'll definitely include all that in the show notes and um might have some athletes reach out to you for some coaching and mentorship that that could be good love that yeah and uh what a great person to have coaching and mentorship from so if you're down to play have some rapid fire questions to close out this podcast you ready all right let's go and if there was one food you could eat every single day for the rest of your life and never get sick of it, what would it be? I have to say bananas. Bananas I, are my absolute, my favorite. I eat like three bananas a day, probably. That's impressive uh, to me because I'm the opposite. I eat like three bananas a year. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's mm -hmm. awesome. So bananas, you're just crushing it. And it's hilarious too because I'm always recommending them, especially for runners. I'm like bananas, bananas, oh, like they're no. like <laughs> bananas at breakfast, bananas in your oatmeal, bananas for a snack, but like, but I myself don't follow through with that one. But <laughs> I'm glad you do. I'm sure that contributed to and has and still is contributing to a lot of your running success. That is bananas. true. <laughs> Awesome. It seems like an obvious answer, but it might not be. What is your favorite sport to participate in? Well, I, yes, it's, it seems like, uh, like, of course, love running. Um, but an answer outside of running would be volleyball. I used to used to play competitively, did some summer leagues. And now I'm hoping to get back into it now that now that running isn't the main focus. Um, I get to expand a little bit. I'm excited. Yeah, very cool. And you are, you do are still running and everything. It's just like you said, not your main focus necessarily at this point in your life. Yes, exactly. But period of growth. Now you get to grow and explore in volleyball once again. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. And what about as a spectator? Do you have a favorite spectator sport? I really love men's basketball. I feel like that's an unexpected answer, but I I am especially March Madness. I love love March Madness. Um, mm -hmm. So women's basketball is great too. I just feel like I I generally watch the men's more. So yeah, big fan. Yeah, and coming from a school like Notre Dame, you know some you know obviously really big athletic programs. So some fun fun sports to watch there. Very cool men's basketball. All right, and then Anna, if there is a female athlete out there that you want to give a shout out to for being, you know, what we call fierce fit and fuel, just somebody who's really inspired and inspiring to you, who would that female athlete be and why? 10 out of 10 Molly Seidel. Um she was my 
college teammate. I got to train with her this past fall in Flagstaff and she just won a bronze medal. And that woman just kicks butt at everything. But she like she's had her struggles as well. And she's she's talked publicly about this many times, but just having her the struggles that she went through, you know, mentally, physically, lots of different things. Um, and then where she is now and what she's been able to accomplish is just absolutely phenomenal. And I can't say I'm surprised. Like her winning <laughs> the bronze medal, like that that girl is so tough. So I big shout out to Molly. <laughs> Yeah, huge shout out to Molly. The running world has been just so proud of her and going crazy since her getting her medal. And yeah, it just hit me that you guys both went to Notre Dame. So you you were teammates the same time together. Yeah, right? yeah, we were there for there for two years. So uh, very cool. Yeah, but she's she's just also a great person, great family. Yeah, it's awesome. Awesome to actually personally know someone that so many people are like, oh, yeah, I really look up to them. It's like, well, I look up to her, but because I don't know, just uh, as a as a friend and as a person. Yeah, you're one of those. But I looked up to her before. Before, yeah, I I was. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Really cool. Well, shout out to Molly and and huge thank you to you, Anna, for coming on this this show, sharing your story, your tips, your nutrition experiences, and just being an inspiration. Thank you so much, and we wish you all the best. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I really hope you enjoyed that episode and thanks for listening. But before I let you go, I have free resources that you can have access to right away, right now, so that you can start fueling your body as a fierce, fit, and fueled female athlete. First, I have your Red S recovery race. If you've ever wondered if you might be struggling with Red S, curious to learn more, or know you have Red S and are looking to recover fast, then you can head to www.riseupnutritionrun.com slash red S and download the red S recovery race. See how you place and figure out the next steps to recovery. Plus while there, I have a few other great resources for you, including three nutrition secrets that every elite athlete swears by and access to our private Facebook community, Female Athlete Nutrition. So again, to gain access to all of this, head to riseupnutritionrun.com slash red S, that's backslash R-E-D-S, and you can gain access and get the help you need fast. Too many girls and women and female athletes struggle with nutrition, but you don't have to any longer. Become fierce, fit, and fueled. Links in the show notes, and I'll see you next time.